something tells me your disposition isn't all it ought to be today. There's nothing wrong with my disposition that a bit of neck wringing wouldn't cure. Oh, uh, anybody's neck in particular? Yes, there is. Some idiot English ambassador who's on his way here to Florence to lend de Medici a lot of money. Well, I, I don't think that would be so much harm. A little more money in Florence might do us all a lot of good. Angelica, don't get me started. You know perfectly well what it'll mean. The Medici will have England as another ally, even more power, and our chances of restoring the Republic will be slimmer than ever. Marco? Good heavens. If that's who I think it is, you can relax. My lady, please come in. Oh, our studio is honored, Francesca, and I am delighted. Oh, I see you're not alone. And what is she supposed to be this time? She is a Neapolitan princess, my lady. Oh, a princess. Really? I'm afraid it's rather difficult these days to find real princesses to model. However, it would be a rare honor. I might consider it. But then, of course, you transform your models, Marco. That's your genius. He doesn't have to transform me. Angelica. Oh, she's a charming girl. But you really must tell her that centuries of breeding go into making a lady. But to business. I want you to design a dress for me. I'm afraid that my talents do not include dress designing. Oh, you're too modest. <laughs> but my lady, you always wear such beautiful clothes. Why should you want to change your dress designer? Oh, this has to be a special dress. I want to wear it when my brother receives the English ambassador. Well, it's a rare honor that I feel reluctant to refuse. You're not going to refuse it, Marco. The ambassador must find out what a genius you are. Maybe he'd like to buy one of your paintings. Hmm, perhaps that one. I'm sure they don't know what a Neapolitan princess looks like in England. Good day. My lady. Are you really going to design this dress? Well, yes, yes, I think I will, and I can use you as the model. You can't not use me as a model. You can paint my picture as many times as you like, wearing crowns or vine leaves or bits of straw. But as for using me to model a dress for the great lady Francesca de' Medici, I'm sorry, I just don't have the breeding. Now then, Angelica, now, don't be like that. After all, this visit of the English ambassador is a very important affair. And if this dress is going to play such an important part in the shaping of history, I see no reason why we two, at least, shouldn't play an important part in shaping the dress. <laughs> well, hold still, then. Oh, Marco, it's too loose here. It must be tighter. We can make it as tight as you like, I'll tell you. Yes, it's beautiful. But I had hoped for more inspiration from you. I'm sorry, my lady, but the visit of an English ambassador is a greater inspiration to your brother than it is to the people of Florence. Is it? The ambassador's report to the king may result in a sizable loan. Huh. The money will be used for the good of the people of Florence. The money will be used for the consolidation of your brother's power. Oh, Marco. Marco, you're cutting me in half. <laughs> what shoes am I supposed to wear? I have them here for you. Your foot, please. No, no, the other one. I don't know why you always argue with me about political affairs. I know as much about them as you do, perhaps even more. Oh, no, you don't. Because you hear only one side of the question. Oh, I know what will happen to the English ambassador once he's inside the palace. He will be... He will be flattered and fated and charmed by the lovely Lady Francesca, and he will be quite as wrong in his conclusions as you are. Do you think my charm will have the same effect on the English ambassador as it does on artists? Oh, good heavens, what's the matter? It seemed a pity to have my foot in the air all that time without doing something with it. I'm so sorry. I did you an injustice when I said the dress wasn't an inspiration. It merely depends on who's wearing it. Let me see you out, my lady. Here. Breeding, is it? Oh! A fancy dress and she expects ambassadors to fall at her feet. Then why not at my feet?
no more interruptions. I have work to do before I reach Florence. I'm sorry, my Lord Ambassador, but a lady has arrived. Lady? I expect no lady. What name did she give? Lady Angelica de la Casa, my Lord. Travelling alone? Appears so, my Lord. I don't think you need have any doubts about her. She is dressed with all the magnificence of a lady of noble birth. Invite her to join me. My Lord. The ambassador will see you. This way, my lady. Lord Ambassador, the Lady Angelica de la Casa. It is gracious of you to receive me, my lord. And of you to seek me out, please. May I offer you some refreshment? Thank you. I sought you out because the chivalry of the Englishman is well known here in Italy. I came to appeal to that chivalry. Well, I trust I can uphold the reputation of my countrymen, my lady. I was travelling to Florence with two of my cousins when we were attacked by bandits. I'm afraid there are many in these parts. Uh, one of the men was killed, the other fled. You mean that your cousin deserted you? Uh, he was only a half-cousin. And the bandits allowed you to get away unmolested? I think when they discovered who I was, they became afraid of the consequences. How can you look so serene after such a dreadful experience? Uh, I suppose breeding has something to do with it. And uh, how can I be of assistance to you? I was hoping you would allow me to travel with you to Florence. There is always danger for a woman alone. Your company will give me the greatest pleasure. I shall be glad of an opportunity to hear about Florence. Oh, I'll tell you all about Florence and de' Medici. Then you uh, know his magnificence? <laughs> of course. And uh, what did you want to tell me about him? Hmm? That the visit of the English ambassador is more inspiring to de' Medici than to the rest of Florence. <laughs> Are you suggesting that the people of Florence aren't looking forward to my arrival? Not if you're going to lend de Medici a lot of money. You're very well informed. <laughs> if I understand you correctly, there are people in Florence who are opposed to this loan. All Florence is opposed to it. I see. You seem to have uh, very decided views on the subject. Come in. What are your wishes, my lord? I want this woman placed under guard. What? I know very little about Italy's noble families, but I doubt if there is such a person as Lady Angelica della Casa. But, my lord, this is Lady... This woman here is a spy. A spy? And I want her placed under guard until His Magnificence is able to advise me how to proceed. So this is English chivalry? My lady, if I may continue to call you that, had you actually been attacked by bandits and appealed to me for help, I would have protected you with my life. As it is, I believe your story is still more than the ruse to gain access to this room. I can only assume how you acquired your clothes, your jewellery, your title. Marco wouldn't let you talk to me like this. And who is Marco? The best artist in Florence. Did he engage you to come here? No. N no, that was my own idea. My lord, I'll, I'll get the guard. Oh, wait. I wish to talk to my guests. Why did you really come here? To tell you that the people of Florence will be the enemies of England if she makes this loan to de' Medici. Somehow, those words don't seem like your own. They're not my own. I'm an artist model. All I know about political affairs is what I learn in Marco's studio. But Marco is sure that this loan can cause nothing but harm. My dear lady, we're not in the habit of basing our decisions upon the opinions of discontented artists. But you're ready to base them on the opinion of tyrants like de' Medici. I'll discover if there's any truth in your friend's claim when I reach Florence. Ah, do you think de' Medici will allow you to talk to the people? No, your only chance is to talk to them now, before you're swallowed up in the Medici Palace. Are you suggesting that I leave this comfortable tavern and go racing off to Florence, ready to talk to your friend Marco? Yes, I am. To talk to Marco or anyone else you like. 
Today you have the freedom to do that. Tomorrow you'll just be a big official, free to talk only with other big officials. <laughs> uh, might be an interesting experience. To see how rebellion against authority takes root. Then you'll come? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, may I ask you just one more favor? What is it? Please, please don't let Marco know how quickly you discovered I wasn't a lady. Ah. What is your name? Angelica. here somewhere. It was all finished. Why do I have to hide it away like treasure? Why can't you put it in a cupboard or hang it on some peg? Uh, well, you could hardly expect me, Francesca, to just leave it hanging around where it could get all splashed with paint and food and wine and stuff. What a boisterous life you do lead. Oh, I'm absolutely certain that I... Ah! Now... Is this some kind of a joke? Well, no, it's Angelica's. Oh, I don't understand it. It was here this morning. Where is your amusing little model? Perhaps she can tell us where it is. I... Yes, that's it. Angelica, I've just remembered. I asked her to sew some pearls on, and uh, she must have taken it home with her. You promised me it in time to receive the English ambassador. I expect you not to disappoint me. Oh, Francesca, have you ever known me to, to disappoint you? I hear the English ambassador is a day's journey from Florence. Well, in that case, there's still plenty of time for your dress, isn't there? I certainly hope so. This is the studio. My lady. Angelica, where have you been? I can't find the... Oh, you're wearing it. Marco, look, I'll explain about that later. Your Excellency, may I present Marco Del Monte? Honored, right, sir. Now, how, how do you do, Angelica? How could you do this to me? I might have been... Marco, I... Excellency? Yes, the English ambassador. He wants to talk to you. Oh, your Excellency, forgive me. Won't you... Won't you sit down? Um, uh, yeah. May I, uh, uh... No, no. Thank you. Oh, Angelica, you're the marvel! Well, how did you manage it? <clears throat> well, the young lady is very persuasive. Now, the point is, she invited me to acquaint myself with the true condition of de' Medici's popularity. On the way here, I spoke to several of your fellow citizens, and not one of them had a word to say against his magnificence. De' Medici rules Florence by fear. No man will speak freely to a stranger. I came prepared to listen to both sides of the argument, and so far only you seem to be protesting. Well, tomorrow, for instance, representatives from all the leading guilds in Florence will be petitioning de' Medici to refuse this loan from England. Oh, His Magnificence, of course, will listen to us. He will politely dismiss us and then continue to do exactly as he pleases. And so we shall continue to make these futile gestures. Well, I suggest that you might have a great deal more success if you take the Lady Angelica with you next time. Angelica? Your Excellency, I think that there is a way in which you can find out for yourself the state of things here in Florence. I'll be very interested to hear about it. Well, Angelica here, with the right clothes, has transformed herself into a lady. I think that there should be little difficulty in having you accepted as one of our guildsmen, if you're prepared to dress as one. It'd be rather an orthodox behavior for an ambassador. Yes, but in that way you could find out for yourself the state of things here in Florence. You think you can make me look like a guildsman? Of course. And you may choose your own guild. You realize I shall have to be sufficiently disguised so that His Excellency will fail to recognize me when I present my credentials later. Angelica, did anyone see you come here? No. Does it matter? Well, if our little plot is discovered, it will mean your life. I doubt if His Excellency will want to make an enemy of my government. Once I've presented myself at the palace, he is responsible for my safety. Ah, once you have presented yourself as the English ambassador, but de' Medici would not be accountable to England for the death of a Florentine guildsman. 
You must forgive me if I still think you exaggerate De Medici's villainy. I'm going to make sure that you have no illusions. I'm flattered by your concern, but there's no danger. No one knows I'm here. Well, if I believe nothing else, I have to believe you're an artist. <laughs> I think it could be improved, though, with a few touches of grey. No, 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 don't make me look uh, any more venerable. Otherwise, his magnificence will wonder why I haven't been chosen to present the petition. Well, Angelica, did you deliver the gown? Yes. And did Lady Francesca leave any message? Yes, she said that she expected it to captivate the English ambassador. But you've already been captivated by it, haven't you, my lord? It would be difficult to captivate me more. Well, then, we're ready for the palace. Do you have the petition? Yes, I have it. Thank you. Very well, gentlemen. I will read this document again at my leisure, and I shall be pleased to provide you with my answer in the fullness of time. Your Magnificence, there is one clause to which you could favor us with an answer now. Uh, is there? Our petition asks that you reconsider the question of the English loan. I do not find that any reconsideration is necessary. We also ask that we might be permitted to present our views to the English ambassador. I have no intention of allowing the ambassador to be submerged under an ill-conceived torrent of what you are pleased to call points of view. Let me put it in the form of a warning. If you approach the ambassador, either collectively or individually, I shall treat it as an act of treachery. I know you all, except one, you. Uh, Master Pico is here as a newly elected representative of the Oil Merchants Guild, Your Magnificence. Uh, welcome, Master... Master... Pico. Welcome, Master Pico. As you are a new member of these committees, I am sure your colleagues will confirm to you that I do not make idle threats. You must excuse me for a moment, gentlemen. I have a matter of some urgency to attend to. Uh, please make yourselves comfortable. I shall be back directly. has indeed been a revelation. He is among a group of guildsmen that I followed here not 30 minutes ago. I have just been speaking to them. It can only be one. The one who calls himself Master Pico. You have done well. Thank you, Your Magnificence. I'm afraid the English ambassador has been foolhardy. He must on no account be allowed to return to London. Tomorrow he arrives at the palace as your guest, Excellency. There should be plenty of opportunities then. No. Once he is in the palace as ambassador, it will be too late. I cannot risk complications with the English now. He must be removed while he is still disguised as a guildsman. That way, the only news to reach London will be that their ambassador has disappeared somewhere on his way to Florence. I cannot be held responsible for that. I will see to it that he has an accident as soon as he leaves the palace, Excellency. Yes. And while you are about it, since Del Monte is so interested in this affair, you might see that the blame for the accident falls upon him. I shall continue to discuss their stupid petition until you have had time to make your arrangements. I think we will invite the English ambassador to take a swim in the Arno. And make sure he does it with a knife in his back, Bandello. Open the doors to the river. Welcome to Florence, my Lord Ambassador. Pucci has orders to kill your model if you make trouble. We thought you might like to see the Arno by moonlight. Bandello has already opened the doors for you. You know who I am? You don't dare lay a hand on me. May I remind you that as you have not yet presented your credentials to His Magnificence, you are merely a foreigner masquerading as a Florentine guildsman. 
Come on, move! No, don't! I am sure the ambassador would rather do as I ask than see you with a knife in your back. They'll kill you. Thank you for your concern, my lady. Come back! Allow me at least to say farewell to my friend. enjoys the river by moonlight. <laughs> Thank you for protecting me. Oh, you don't need much protection. England trains her ambassadors to be able to cope with most emergencies. Well, we'd better straighten up this mess. Oh, for a moment, I thought you meant me. Oh. <laughs> Forgive my ungallant behavior. Oh, I don't mind being pushed around by you. I'm quite sure you're not hurt. You know, I admire tremendously the way you handle that fruit bone. <laughs> I wasn't very ladylike. You were magnificent. No, oh, this is all very touching, but I really think it's time we got His Excellency out of Florence before de Medici tries again. No, 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 no. I must present myself at the palace. As the captain so rightly said, de Medici may try and kill a Florentine Gilson, but I doubt very much whether he would be so foolhardy as to attempt to harm an English ambassador. Pushed around. <laughs> This is intolerable. Intolerable! It will take me years to repair the damage done by that pompous, meddling fool of an ambassador. To say nothing of the damage to my self-respect. Do you think he'll like my dress? What does it matter whether or not he likes your dress? In any event, may I remind you that he is an Englishman. So do not expect him to be interested in anything except his, his, his bedwarming pan and, and, and his ale. And, and he is probably incapable of anything but the grossest, grossest... <laughs> Ah, my lord ambassador. We have looked forward to this, your first visit as ambassador with the greatest anticipation. Not greater than my own, your magnificence. Uh, may I present my sister, the lady Francesca. May I compliment you upon the beauty of your gown, my lady? How very kind of you, and how very gallant of you to have noticed it. May I assure my Lord Ambassador that we shall do everything in our power to make you feel at home. Oh, I assure your magnificence, I already feel quite at home.